All right, Shalom. We're the Real Hebrew Israelites coming from the branch of the GMS in Indianapolis camp. We'd like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who were well. And Shalom to you, Sir Akim and Akwaf, listen and learn it, and to you, brothers and sisters, and you, brothers, preaching and teaching this truth through the four corners of the earth. All right, we just want to go through a quick lesson through the spirit on what Yahweh Shai is coming back with a sword, man. All right, he's not coming to bring peace. This is uh, Matthew 10 and 34. It says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Right, so Yahweh Shai, he's not... He's not here to uh, to unite the world, you know, because uh, who the world even calls Jesus Christ, which is Yahweh Shai, right? See, the world views him as what? One, a so-called white man, which he's not. And two, they think he's just coming to bring all peace peace and love and harmony and uh, nothing uh, 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 is gonna, uh, nothing bad is going to happen. No, Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring a sword, man. All right, which what? It means death and destruction he's coming with, all right? Because of verse 35, for I come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. See? All right. So he's coming to separate people, man. Cause that cause division. All right. And, and we know through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yashah is what? The elect, we, we've already been separate. We're already separate from everybody else, man. All right. Well, we're being separate uh, from among these people, even in our families and stuff. And we see that the Lord is, uh, you know, this is the year of Yahweh Bashim Yashah turning up, man. He's showing who the true, who his true servants are in these last days, man. All right. And the Lord is bringing back that destruction. Did you have something? I got something. Yeah, I got a quick precept. Right. This is uh, the book. Of, so, like, this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 49, and it's in red letter. So, it's our Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. All right, it reads, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? All right, you know, also, you know, the fire that's going to, you know, come upon the earth before our Lord Yahweh Shire returns is going to be by way of, you know, uproars of the people, all right, people turning against each other, people killing each other with the sword, all right, yep. you know, when, when the Lord comes back, all right, he's going to, he's just going to add more fuel to the fire, all right, with literal fire, and that's going to come by way of uh, the, the nuclear missiles, all right, and the, uh, Concentrated laser beam that's coming from the chariot. All right. That's why he it, said, uh, go ahead. And what will I if it be already kindled? Because all hell is already going to have broken loose, but the Lord is going to add more and more and more to it. I right? just make it worse than what it already will be. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and yeah, and, it, and it's, yeah, it's kindling now. You know, we're seeing mm -hmm. this place wax worse and worse, man. This, this, this kingdom of Esau Edom, the so called white man, is going down the toilet bowl, man. All right, but the Lord, guess what? He's coming back with that destruction, man, especially upon Esau Edom, the so-called white man. All right, because he's gonna avenge his people and ultimately uh himself, he's gonna get that payback, man. All right, because what Esau Edom, the Romans, man, they put him on the cross. Yeah, our P our uh, two thirds of our people, the wicked of our nation, what uh helped forward him to be put on the cross, but ultimately what Esau Edom put him on the cross, man. Those Romans, man, so-called white men. Yep. This is, uh, are you done with that? No. no this is uh, Isaiah 63 and 1. It says, who is, this, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? You know, we know Basra is what? One of Esau Edom's uh, main capital cities, right? It says, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in his greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, might, mighty to save. And it's talking about Yahweh Shah, man, coming as all his glory, man. All right, th th this is who they're talking about, right? And check this out. Verse 2, it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, right? Because he's about to bring mighty bloodshed and destruction, right? And we're about to get right into it. Isaiah 63 and 3. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there is none with me. For I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Now, now Yahweh Shai, he's not going to literally get blood on his garment and defile himself. Nah, he he that is just talking about all the bloodshed he's about to lay down on this earth, man. Especially among these nations, chiefly who Esau Edom, man, tearing down this kingdom and the strongholds. All right, so the Lord is about to get down, man. 
All right, he came as that as that as that lamb, that sheep, right? And, and was sacrificed, right? He came in peace, but now he's come, like I said, he's come with that sword, man. Now he's come with that great wrath. That's why he said, he said, I have tried in the wine press alone. All right. And the wine press, well, that's what crushes grapes, man. You know, so he hey, he's gonna tread, hey, he's gonna tread them down, man. He's gonna stomp these mug, these mugs out, man. The Lord has come back to lay the lay down the law, man. It says uh Isaiah 6, 3 and 4. It says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. See, the day of vengeance, man. All right. So he's gonna he's about to come back and get down with the get down. All right, he's gonna totally lay waste these kingdoms, and he's because he he's the king of all kings, lord of all lords, man. And he's about mm -hmm. to show that. All right, come back in that mighty uh, chariot and the host of angels, man. And, and he's gonna strike fear in the in these people's hearts, man. Because right now, especially our people, what they, they don't fear you about Shemuel Shah, man. They think this wickedness is gonna continue on and on. And, and you know, they're, like I said, they're hand, they're joined hand in hand with the oppressors, man. And uh, Isaiah 63 and 5 it says, And I looked and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down the strength to the earth. See, so he's gonna ultimately tear down all these uh, nations and kingdoms. And he's gonna be on top, ruling uh, with the hundred forty-four thousand under him, King David. You know, and, and righteousness, man, taking all this BS out of this world, man. And we're, the world's gonna uh, reign in righteousness, man. That's what Yahweh shot back. He's not coming with that peace of safety, man. You know, but hey, he's coming with peace of safety for his elect. Guarantee mm -hmm. that. <laughs> you know, I guarantee that. You know, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man. Hey, you better seek the Lord while he may be found, man. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. This is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 47, and verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. All right? Now, also, before the, before the warrior, how shall I make his return? All right? He's going to put, put the spirit on his men to expose you. You saw eating the so-called white man for all the wickedness you have, committed, you have committed upon this earth. All right? Now, the point being... I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man, right? Because when the Lord, you know, uh, first walked to earth as he, how will shine, or he came in the flesh, all right? But when he makes this return, all right, he's coming back as an angelic force to, to hey, man, he, hey, he gonna lay the smack down on that ass he saw yeah. with, the, with the, uh, uh, the holy angels of heaven right behind him, all right? And it's only gonna take him one hour, as the scripture says, one hour. So the Lord, he's coming to completely. You know, wipe this place, desolate, get rid of wickedness in general. All right, you know, the Lord is coming back to, you know, fuck some shit up. Yep, that's right. Let's check this out. Uh, we done with that? Yeah. And then that's why it says, this is Amos 5 and 18. This is woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Right, to what end is it for you? This is talking about this is talking about like you people in the churches, man. These other philosophies that you know can't wait uh, for the Lord to you say the Lord come back, but you don't do anything that the Lord says, right? Mm -hmm. You disannul His law, statute, commandments. All right, you, you celebrate these wicked uh, uh, pagan holidays. All right, you uh, uh, you commit all manner of wickedness, man. And then ultimately, what? Especially the two two thirds of our people, all they want to do is what? Save these other nations. They're not worried about how these nations say uh, served us. They, but they want to save them, right? And it says, but it's but it's not just and woe means destruction. It's not talking about destruction because the men of the Lord, the hopeful elect, we we want the Lord to come back, man. All right, but we're but we're mm -hmm. doing we're doing what we're making our call and election sure, man. By what doing the things that the Lord has asked to the best of our ability, man. Yeah, we're not perfect, but we're striving. We're pushing towards perfection of Yahweh Hashem All right, we're making. The effort, all right. The, re the rest of these people in this world ain't making an effort for the Lord, man. All right, they, they act like He doesn't exist, right? It says the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? See, that's ultimate destruction, man. All right, that means there's no rest for the wicked. All right, you you, you get away from one uh, one mishap, now now you're on to the next. All right, 
So that's why you're gonna have to uh, uh, need the protection of Yahweh Hashem Yashah, or you're not gonna make it, man. All right, because the the Lord is isn't playing anymore, man. He's never been playing, but he's had what that grace and mercy. But those doors of mercy are closed and fast, man. That's why you have famines coming. That's why you have these new pestilences. All right, that's why you have uh, uh, uproars of the people, man. Because why? The Lord is on his way back, and he's coming. And it's, things are moving so fast, man. It, it could be this year, Lord willing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. You got anything? You go ahead. Yeah, man. I got something. Go ahead, brother. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, righteousness does he doth judge and make war. All right. Now that white horse, all right. He's going to a chariot of Israel, all right. You know, we know our Lord Yahweh Shai see, to be uh, coming back uh, via the chariots of Israel, all right. It says, um, uh, He that sat upon him was called faithful and true, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai, and in righteousness does, does he judge and make war, all right. Because ultimately, what the Lord is coming back to do is in complete righteousness, all right. Because what he's doing is uh, destroying this world for its, for its wickedness, uh, destroying the world for its wickedness. All right, uh, taking out Esau, Edom for the things he's done, he's done all right, <clears throat> uh, while ruling the earth, what he's done against, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai's and the little brothers, the little sisters, that being us, all right, and ultimately the nation of Israel as a whole, all right, what he's done against uh, the Lord himself, all right, it says, uh, verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, now why does it say that, because ultimately many crowns on the Lord's head is symbolic for him, Coming back to you know, take down many kings and kingdoms, all right, and becoming the ultimate ruler over the earth, all right. It says, uh, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, all right. Now, ultimately, we know we know our uh, our Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. So, what this is talking about, all right, is that uh, only Yahweh Shai is able to carry out this task, that being uh, delivering the elect of the nation of Israel, all right. And uh, bringing destruction into America, all right, wiping this place out in one hour, all right. And uh, verse 13 says, uh, and he was clothed, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, all right. And this is symbolic for the Lord coming back to do a lot of killing, all right, because he's not going to get you know, he's not going to get literal blood on his garments, all right. That's just symbolic for the Lord, you know, coming back to uh, do a uh, mass bloodshed, all right. And it says, um and his name is called the word of the most high. Remember, uh, law come in a volume of the book that is written to me. All right, that's speaking of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right, verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. All right, and those white horses are going into the chariots. All right, and we know that uh, in those chariots that the holy angels are backing up our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and helping him destroy this wicked kingdom. All right, and that white and clean, is a symbolic for purity because we know the angels to be holy and pure, all right. And this is um, book of first Corinthians 15 and uh, verse 24, all right. It says, Then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the most high, even the father, and he. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, all right? And that authority and power beginning with uh, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, because that's the number one enemy all right, on our Lord's hit list, all right? Now, these Edomites are the ones who have, you know, uh, ruling, these so-called white people are known as the biblical Edomites. They have been the ones that are ruling over the earth by right, wickedness for a long period of time, all right? They're the ones, you know, that crucified our Lord Yahweh Shai, all right? They're the ones that put they're the main ones that put, you know, all hell on the Israelites. All right, you know, they, the other heathen nations, you know, had a hand in our uh, affliction and our hell, too. All right. But once again, you know, uh, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, is number one on the Lord's hit list. All right. Uh, verse 25. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. So ultimately, the Lord is coming back to uh, destroy his wicked kingdom. I right, get rid of wickedness in general. All right. He's going to... Uh, Establish a, a complete dominion and rulership. All right. First and foremost, beginning with him. All right. Then you have King David up under our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. 
And then after that, you got the rest of the governing body. All right. That's right, bro. That's right. Um, let me see here. We can end it on that if you unless you got something else. Uh let me see. I can grab the second Peter chapter three real quick. Yeah, that's fine. This is uh the book of Second Peter, chapter three, and I'll begin at verse nine. All right. It says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, all right, because ultimately this the scripture says that because you know the Lord is always going to deliver on his word, all right. Manifold scriptures, you know, tell us you know, uh, Isaiah 55 and 11, his word shall not come back unto him void, all right. Isaiah 46 and 10, uh, declaring the end from the beginning, all right. So the Lord, you know, has everything set up and everything that the Lord has written therein in the scriptures, all right, it should to come to pass, all right. And it says that some men count slackness because, for one, you know, men, men on the earth, are right, they're not, they're not, uh, they don't keep their promises like that, you know, they say they'll help you do something, so the next day, you know, the next day comes, they don't do it. Sorry, bro. I help you know in, in a couple days, a couple days passes by, they still don't do it. All right. But whereas the Lord, all right, whatever the Lord, you know, puts his word to, uh, all right. Or whatever the Lord says, man, it goes. All right. Also, you know, these people on the earth, all right, they don't they don't think the Lord or they don't believe in the Lord's promise because this not he's not coming back, you know, on their time frame. All right. Now the Lord's time frame is different from ours, all right. So a thousand uh uh uh, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, all right, to us, all right. And a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord, all right. It says, uh, but it's long suffering back in Second Peter chapter three verse nine. But it's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, all right. Now, who's that us we're talking about? You Israelites, all right. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right. Now we know through prophecy that two thirds of our people are going to have to die off because they refuse to put away their false gods. All right, they refuse to stop being wicked. All right, ultimately they refuse to hearken into the ways he how about Shimei Shai and the warnings that uh, he's given to his prophets. All right, and ultimately only the elect is going to come to repentance and receive that salvation. All right, verse ten says, uh, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise." All right, and we know uh, heavens to be interchangeable with rulership. All right, so this current you know wicked kingdom slash rulership that we're living in. All right. It's going to pass away uh, due to uh, uh, nuclear destruction. All right. That's what that great noise is, the nuclear destruction. All right. It says, um, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up because also, you know, not only are the missiles going to touch down in this place. All right. But also, you know, the Lord Yahweh Shai coming back with the holy angels of heaven and the chariots. All right. They're going to uh, touch down in this place with concentrated laser beams. All right. To add into that fire. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So knowing that the Lord is soon to return, all right, how ought you to be, you know, conducting yourself on a day-to-day -day basis? All right, and mainly that holy conversation is going to pre uh, teaching correct doctrine, all right? all right? None of these false wayward doctrines that uh, will lead the children of Israel astray, all right? Because the goal, really the goal is to look for the elect, all right? So we're not supposed to be teaching things that we know uh, make Israel stray further from the Heavenly Father, all right? And it's only begotten son. Verse 12 says, uh, looking for and hasting unto the day of the coming of the Most High, all right? And that goes, uh, that's backing up the brother when he brought out Amos 5 and uh, 18 earlier, because that said, woe well, unto well, you that desire the day of the Lord. All right, now us and the know, we desire the day of the Lord, all right? Because we know it comes with salvation for the elect, all right? At the end of this wicked kingdom, all right, and the end of affliction for all of Israel. All right, contrary to the people of the world and these other different doctrines, all right, they're doing nothing that the Lord has told them to do. All right, doing pretty much everything completely opposite. All right, against the scriptures, you no know, eating pork, committing adultery, committing idolatry, this, that, and the third. All right, so ultimately, like the scripture said, what end is it for them? There's nothing good coming coming for them. All right, when the day of the Lord uh, appears. All right, it says, uh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So ultimately, it's going to get so hot. All right. All the elements you see on the periodic table, even those are going to melt up. All right. Remember, our Lord Yahweh Shai stated in the book of Matthew that uh, not one stone shall be left upon another. All right. Because this destruction that's coming all right, is coming to completely wipe out everything you see upon the earth. All right. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, 
according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth where in dwells righteousness. All right, and also know this is our Lord Yahweh Shai bringing the true great reset. All right, where he uh, does away with his wicked kingdom. All right, sets up the earth. All right, in righteousness that's orchestrated under the laws of Yahweh Bashim All right, and ultimately that's the kingdom we're looking for because we hate wickedness. All right, just as the Lord does. All right. Khan, I got something real quick. Khan. Khan, hey, yeah, hey, the Lord is Lord is fed up with the sinners, man. All right, he, he's fed up with the wicked ways of this earth, man. Because why? The earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Job nine twenty four. Who's that wicked? Esau, Edom, pursuing the Malachi one hundred four, man. So called white man, ye are the wicked. This is Isaiah thirteen and nine. This is behold, the day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate, see, like not not one stone upon another, man. Lay desolate. I mean, there ain't gonna be nothing left, man. Totally annihilated, destroyed, and he shall destroy the sinners there out of it, right? With what? Thermal nuclear destruction, concentrated laser beams, uh, uh, other weapons of war. I mean, there's gonna be so much death and destruction, man. You're not, you're, you're, if you don't have Yahweh Shemel Shai, you're gonna bug out, man. All right, which we know two thirds of people are, and you know the rest of these na nations don't stand a damn chance, man, because they're considered nothing, right? But he says, and he shall destroy the sinners there out of it. All right, so it ain't, it ain't no in the Christian church. Well, the Most High uh, hates the sin and not the sinner. No, he hates the sinners. All right, he's not dealing with it. That's why he's gonna totally destroy them. It says, verse ten: For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Right. Because when those nuclear missiles go off, it's going to form mushroom clouds and blot out all that. Right. Plus what? What else, what else is that going to? What the wisdom lies and understanding will no longer be on uh, to be able to be uh, obtained. It'd be totally destroyed from there. It's not there. And then uh, verse 11, Isaiah, Isaiah 13, 11, it says, and I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity that sin upon sin, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And who's the ultimate proud? Esau, Edom. All right, they're no longer going to be on that that high level uh, uh, thinking they are gods. Right, they're going to be totally annihilated because when Yahweh Yah Yah Shai comes back, man, he's putting that all to rest, man. He, he he's going to flatten this place, man. It says, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Right, and who's that terrible? We talking about Esau, Edom, man. The haughtiness. Haughtiness and proud is the same thing, man. All right, so they're going to be totally dissolved, man. All right. And, uh, yeah, that, that's fine. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm good right there. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Close that on that. All right, so ultimately, hey, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you better get right with Yahweh Shem Yashah because the doors of mercies are closing, closing, are closing. All right. And Yahweh Shah is not coming to bring peace, but a sword. So with that, we pray that I was edified to the body. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Yahweh Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And shalom to Sir Akim and Akwath, listening and learning. And to you brothers preaching and teaching this truth through the four corners of the earth. And with that, Ababa Ba. Ababa Ba. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom. Shalom.